Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect men doing his work in truth and his sincerity. All right, this is Luke chapter 22. In verse 31, and the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath the desire to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, you know, we in this truth. And as a man of the Lord, we, we go through all types of obstacles. Whether small or big. You know, whether infirmities physically or infirmity, infirmities uh, mentally, spiritually. You know, so we see um, that Satan is always desiring to sift us or, or take us out of this truth. But as the Most High said to Simon... And it's also, you know, goes to show that we know, you know, that Simon was of the elect. Pursuing to John the 17th chapter that the Most High, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, you know, prayed to the Father, Yahweh, to uh, to keep us, man. As we are in his truth, the Most High keeps us, man. All right, so that's the balance. As we fight for the Lord and the Most High is keeping us, Satan is trying to take us out of this truth, man. All right? And at the end, you know what I'm saying, when the Most High, the Most High is going to, Basically, you know what I'm saying, give Satan the, for some of us, you know, as it is written, you know, some of us shall be a martyr, you know, and it's also written how, um, in Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, you know what I'm saying, how he's going to, you know, try us, man, and see if our faith is strong with the Lord, you know, so this is why we have to continue to stay diligent, we have to continue to stay diligent, man, to make, to make sure that we are walking with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai at all times, man. All right. Real quick, I'm gonna get that. Uh, get that in first. Was it First Peter's five and eight? Be sober. Be and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. Seeking whom he may devour. And what does being sober mean? Alright, let's look it up. First Peter's five. But we gotta be sober, man. Alright. One of the things of being sober is taking heed to the apostles, man. There you go, right there. First Peter chapter 5. Alright, we're sober. Sober. Nepho. Nepho. To be sober, to be calm and collected in spirit. To be temperament, dispassionate, circumspect. Alright, so to be so uh, sober is to be circumspect, man. Circumspect about what's going on around us, man. All right, circumspect about your spirit, man. How your spirit is being affected, you know what I'm saying? On the day to day. Are you being too emotional on certain things? Are you not Are you not giving enough thought to certain things? Are you just going with the wind of certain things? Are you really taking heed to what the Most High put the apostles and elders on the apostles and elders to say? All right. Let's look up, because I've seen some other scriptures on sober-minded, being sober. Uh, let me see what other scriptures we got. Titus two and two. Two and one, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, 
grief, temperament, sound in faith, and charity and patience. All right, and we see that through the apostles and elders of great millstone, millstone those are the age men in, uh, in spirit and in faith, man. They're doing this thing, you know what I'm saying, since, you know what I'm saying, since a lot of us was in diapers, man, or babies, you know. That the age men be sober, grave, temperament, sound in faith, and charity and patience. Which our apostles and who, you know what I'm saying, and who taught us his truth. And then it goes on to say, I'm going to skip uh, to verse, let me see. Six, like young men, likewise exhort to be sober-minded, all right? So us as young men, all right, we're supposed to be sober-minded. And as the apostles, like I was saying, you know, before, how the apostles is older men, and how they are sober, how they are, um, as it says, grave, all right, um, temperamental, sound in faith and charity and patience, so are we as young men, all right? All right, these, all right, so we supposed to be sober, man, because our adversary, the devil, is looking, man, is looking to take us out, man, in any way, shape, or form, man. So like I said, you know, looking at, at yourself, man, instead, always taking a step back and looking at yourself, man, is key, all right, because if you don't, all right, one one, one uh, bad move could be your last, could be your last, all right, going for myself first. You know, always praying and asking the Most High to keep your spirit into him, man. So that you may know the right way to go, man. All right. All right. Yeah, how was Shai always, you know, he always spoke. Um, He always spoke words of wisdom to his disciples, man. He always spoke uh, words of wisdom to his disciples. And which his disciples spoke words of wisdom unto um, the men that they were teaching, man, through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, man. All right, through the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Um, this is back in Luke. And Luke 22. And uh, back at 31. And the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. All right, and like I said, in the last days, all right, the most is going to be a time like it was never before seen, you know? It's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, all right? All right, where the most high is going to try us, man. All right, and you may think, well, I'm going to just keep reading because I don't want to talk over, uh, I don't want to speak too fast, but, uh, verse 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou convertest, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. So Simon knew, Simon knew, I, you know, where Yahweh Shai was headed to, man. All right, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, like ye anything, and they said nothing. All right. You know, so even though we about to, you know, enter to these dark times, man. All right. Because it's, hey, man. As the scriptures also say that, um, you know, basically that, um, I forgot how it go, but it was basically saying, you know, uh, basically these, uh, the plays that's coming on this place shall, shall happen suddenly, man. They shall say peace and safety, then then come a sudden destruction. So out of nowhere, man. You know? You know? And we got to just pray to, you know what I'm saying, stand in spirit, man. Because, you know, right now, you may go through your hell or whatever. But it's, it's not compared to those last days, man. So how are you going to take it when things just switch out of nowhere? And maybe now, you know, you probably make a mistake. Um, Things are going okay. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? Let's say things going okay with you and Eve, and then she just switching you, and it pissed you the fuck off. You know what I'm saying? Getting you all all, all bent out of shape, you know? Now you're losing your wits, man, acting crazy. All right? So you can't be like that in the last days, man. We still got to, you know what I'm saying, call and ask upon you how about Shimmy I was shy because as it is written, man, and when he sent his disciples out without anything, they still lack nothing, man. 
All right? You know what I'm saying? So basically, in them last days, you're going to feel like you ain't got nothing, man. You're going to feel like, you know what I'm saying, the most I have forsaken you. But he didn't. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this is that is Salaki. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me having in. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Um, skip to verse 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. So that's what we're supposed to be praying for. Because the time will come where our faith will be tested, man. All right. And we know that our temptation is talking about that chip, man. All right. Well, people are going to be... Be getting put to death for not taking that chip. You may not be able to eat for like a week for not, you know what I'm saying, just for not having that chip, man. Your loved ones, the ones that, you know what I'm saying, you may have trusted in to help you out, they may turn their back on you, man. All right? You know? And me saying this, you know, for going first and foremost for myself, you know, and out to you, you are the Akim out there. And when he said at this place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. So we're supposed to ask the Most High that we enter not into temptation, which basically that temptation is, you know what I'm saying, uh, giving, you know what I'm saying, giving in to the devil, man, not being sober-minded. All right? Not being temperamental, man. Not being faithful unto the Most High. We have to pray that we enter not into those things, man. All right? Let's look up that word temptation, actually, in Luke 22. Experiment and attempt a trial approving an internal temptation to sin. All right. And what is sin, man? Sin is a transgression of the law, man, which basically, uh, like Yahweh Shah said, one of the main laws is to fear the most high with all your heart and all your, um, all your heart. All right. All your, let me see. Let me get it locked here. Yeah. All right. So that's, uh, Matthews 22. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Yahweh shall I said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And if you love someone with all your mind, you're not gonna um go away from him, man. You're gonna always think upon him, man. Alright? And temptations and everything, man. Alright, so back at Luke twenty two and forty. And when he Said at this at the place, and he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about and he was drawn from them about a stone cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. All right, so it's whatever the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh is, man. All right, and according to Revelations 3 and 10, we know his will is to try us, man. Whatever whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, how he's going to try us, man. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Um, let me see. No, that's not it. I want to get the, I think, Revelations 2. It says... Fear none of these things. Uh, so I can try to find it. Uh, 
try. Some Revelations three. Oh, I think that was it. Okay, so lock it. Three and ten because that has kept the word. I was also because that has kept the word of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So we know the Most High's will is to try us, man. And we know, like I said before, that's a chip, man, because it says what shall come upon all the world, in which we know that the chip is going to be pushed between into all nations, all men, women, uh, children, old and young, you know what I'm saying, uh, rich and poor. All right. So the Most High, his will is to try us. But as Yahweh Shai said, not... Not my will, but let thy will be done. We just hope that his will is to, you know, get us out of that temptation, man. All right. Go back to Luke uh, 22. Verse 42 um, saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him oh shoot so that's how we see man the most in the end you know what i'm saying the last days if we be men of the lord all right which we've been doing the works man and yahweh shai said he is not forgetful of your works, man. So he's going to look you out, man. All right? If you just hold fast to what, to what you have, man. And then at the end, man, you're going to have strength, man. You're going to know, man. You're going to have super, you know what I'm saying? The most, I believe that the most high is going to bless us with more faith, man, to get us through. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And it's a... When I read that, I think about the um the precept in the apocrypha. Let me see. Try to find it real quick. The precept in the apocrypha, where it says um how's it go? Um, basically how you pray, but basically you're not satisfied until the Most High answers your prayers. Let's see, maybe this might help me. What will I? The one is a rock. Let me see. Oh, the Wadi Hawa. There it is. 35.17. Right? You know, so. That's just like what well, Yahweh Shah prayed more earnestly, man. He prayed more earnestly, knowing that his hour was come, man. And he was like, please, 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 you know, help me out here, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Don't, uh, don't forsake me. So rock 35 and 17. The prayer of the humble pierced with the clouds until it, I, it 
come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart. So the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. And that's what we, you know what I'm saying, hoping for, man. That he judge righteously, man. And you know what I'm saying, he, he look at our works. He look at all that we, you know what I'm saying, been, been doing for him and Lord willing, he have mercy upon us, man. And ultimately execute judgment on these devils, man. He prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And he said, Forget all that, man. Keep pushing, man. Rise and pray, lest you yourselves enter into temptation. Lest, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And that goes to show you what that we supposed to be on our watch as men of the Lord, man, because if you praying for something, all right, that means that you on the watch because you see it coming, man. You don't want to be a part of that, man. All right. So the disciples, what they were watchmen, man. They were looking, you know what I'm saying? They were looking for as we supposed as we're supposed to do, man. They're watchmen, man. Looking 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 at the prophecies, current events, man. Looking at, you know what I'm saying, looking at what's going on around them, man. All right. All right, don't be sorrowful. All right, but knowing that these things are coming, you know, uh, you know, pray that ye enter not into temptation, man. Because, like I said, man, we, you know, what I'm saying it's gonna come a time, man, where suddenly this thing is gonna happen upon us, man. But we gotta stay on our watch and hope, you know, what I'm saying, continue to keep praying and asking the Most High to keep our faith strong and even stronger, man. Even stronger, man. All right, so that in those last days, you know what I'm saying? In those last days, we won't, basically, we won't lose out on the prize, man, because you lost faith. Right, so we won't lose out on the prize, man, because you lost faith. All right. All right, I'm going to go back to it, man. Hey, beat our faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown for life, man. A crown to a crown of life. All right. So what that means that if you're not faithful unto death, the Most High is not going to give you a crown of life, man. All right. Meditating, you know what I'm saying? Meditating on the things the Most High allowed you to say. Uh... Uh, Revelation 3 and 12, this is a good one. He that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of the heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my name. All right, so we know that's talking about the elect right there, man. He that overcometh. So if we overcome, man, all right? We gonna have everything our heart could wish for and even more, man. All right, just because we overcame and we kept our faith until the end, man. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, man. All right, the Most High is gonna give us a crown of life, man. All right, that wisdom, you know what I'm saying, being on top, everybody reverencing you. All right. Going to share that this place is only a trial of your faith, man. That's it. It's a prison camp, ultimately. But as as is written in Baruch, man, the Most High put us in captivity so that we could his name, man. All right. And thus call upon him to get us out of here, man. All right. So at every time, man, we keep our spirit upon the Lord. Like, like Job, man. Job, you know what I'm saying? He kept his faith. He kept his integrity. And the Most High gave him... So much, man, just because of doing that, man. So, Lord willing, we do we we uh do the same thing, man. All right, as this is your year of diligence, we keep we we remain diligent, man. All right.
All right, because we are the prophets, man. That's what we do. We talk along with the prophet prophecies, man. All right, we want the most high to keep, you know what I'm saying, keep talking with us, man. All right, and in the last days, all right, you think he's going to forsake you, man? Like the brother had brought out in camp the other day, Hebrews 6, man. He is not righteous to forget your work and labor of love, man. All right, you know? So with that, uh, let me see. Let's grab it real quick. Hebrews 6. I think it was 9. Uh, 10. For God is not righteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. All right. Get one more. I think it's 2 Corinthians 12 and 8. Twelve and nine, he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Yahweh Shai may rest upon me. And basically, I had got that because, you know, just basically going to uh, further edify the point of in them last days, how the Most High is going to give us that, you know what I'm saying, give us that increase in spirit, man. You know? Because the Most High is fair and He's merciful, man. He's always has been. He, he, he's, he always will be, man. You know, so with that, I pray, brothers, edified. Um, Yahweh Shim, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Shalom, Akim.